The Sahara Desert. It's a place that evokes images of endless sand, blistering heat, and a harsh environment where only the toughest survive. Stretching over 3.6 million square miles across North Africa, it's nearly the size of the United States. Known for its scorching temperatures and relentless aridity, it's one of the most extreme places on Earth. Yet, against all odds, this parched desert is beginning to flood. Rainfall is hitting areas that haven't seen water in decades, rivers are re-emerging, and some regions are witnessing flash floods that tear through the sand, leaving locals and scientists baffled. Could it be that the Sahara, synonymous with dryness, is changing? And if so, why? In this video, we're diving deep into the mystery of the Sahara's newfound floods, uncovering how one of the driest places on Earth could suddenly become a place of water and life. But before we can understand why this is happening, we need to travel back in time to the Sahara's ancient past. While today's Sahara is defined by dryness, it hasn't always been this way. In fact, around 10,000 years ago, the Sahara was green. This era, known as the African Humid Period or the Green Sahara, was a time when the desert was an entirely different place, one with rivers, lakes, and sprawling grasslands that stretch for hundreds of miles. Ancient cave paintings found across the Sahara show us glimpses of this forgotten paradise. These artworks depict scenes of human life alongside hippos, crocodiles, and antelope, animals you'd expect to see in a lush African savanna, not a desert. For thousands of years, early humans hunted, fished, and thrived in a landscape that would be unrecognizable to us today. So, what happened to this green Sahara? Around 5,000 years ago, the Earth's climate shifted. A gradual change in the tilt of our planet altered the distribution of sunlight across regions, affecting monsoon patterns. The rains that once soaked the Sahara moved southward, drying up rivers and lakes, and eventually transforming the lush landscape into the vast desert we know today. But if history tells us anything, it's that nature runs in cycles. Now, thousands of years later, the Sahara appears to be on the brink of change once again. Rain is returning, bringing with it both life and the threat of flooding. But what's causing this shift now? Scientists are captivated, and frankly, a little alarmed by the sight of rain falling over the Sahara. How can a place so consistently dry suddenly experience such dramatic weather events? The answer lies in a complex mix of climate forces, each playing a unique role in the desert's unusual transformation. One significant factor is the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean currents have a profound effect on Africa's climate, particularly through the West African monsoon, a seasonal wind system that brings rain to the region south of the Sahara. In recent years, the Atlantic has been warming due to climate change, leading to increased evaporation. More moisture in the air means heavier rains, and some of these rains are reaching further north, brushing the edge of the Sahara. Then there's the Mediterranean Sea. Surprisingly, rising temperatures in the Mediterranean are also contributing to the Sahara's rainfall. Warmer Mediterranean waters evaporate more quickly, sending moisture-laden air southward, where shifts in wind patterns carry it deeper into the desert. These altered patterns are fueling brief but intense bursts of rainfall over areas that were previously bone dry. But that's not the whole story. Rising global temperatures mean the atmosphere can hold more moisture, which leads to heavier and more frequent rainfall in regions where it would typically be rare. This trend, where deserts around the world are seeing more extreme rain events, is now becoming more visible, with the Sahara as a dramatic example. Could this recent uptick in Sahara rainfall signify a long-term trend? Or is it merely a blip, a temporary phenomenon driven by short-term weather patterns? When discussing the Sahara's surprising weather, we can't overlook the role humans have played. Our actions, particularly the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, have altered Earth's atmosphere, driving up temperatures and impacting weather systems worldwide. The Sahara, it turns out, is warming faster than many other places, which is accelerating changes in its climate. One significant effect of this warming is an increase in rainfall intensity. When rain does fall in the Sahara, it's no longer a mild shower, it's often a deluge, leading to flash floods that can cause severe damage. This isn't unique to the Sahara. Similar trends have been observed in other arid regions, where the combination of increased moisture in the air and higher temperatures creates the conditions for extreme weather. Then there's the impact of land use. Overgrazing and deforestation across North Africa 
have stripped the landscape of vegetation that would typically help retain moisture. Without plants and trees to hold water, the land becomes even more prone to flash floods. Rainfall that might once have been absorbed into the soil now rushes across the surface, carving paths through the desert and creating rivers where there were none. Together, these factors reveal a complex interplay between natural forces and human-driven changes, all converging to bring an unlikely transformation to the Sahara. The impact of the Sahara's flooding isn't just scientific, it's deeply human. Across North Africa, local communities are being caught off guard by this intense, sudden rainfall. In places like Mauritania, Algeria, and Egypt, unexpected rainstorms have washed away roads, damaged homes, and left people grappling with a problem they never thought they'd face. How to deal with water in the desert. In 2022, for example, parts of southern Algeria and northern Mali saw rainfall that was almost unheard of for the region, resulting in severe flooding that destroyed homes and displaced hundreds of families. Buildings in these areas aren't built to withstand rain, let alone floods. They're designed to handle the desert's brutal heat, not intense downpours that turn roads into rivers. The ecological impacts are equally striking. Rain in the desert brings a burst of life as plants suddenly bloom, sometimes overnight, painting the sand with patches of green. This temporary oasis of life attracts animals that haven't been seen in the area for years. Birds, insects, and even some mammals emerge to take advantage of the abundance. But this newfound ecosystem is fragile and short-lived, often fading once the rain stops. For the people and wildlife of the Sahara, these floods are a mixed blessing, offering both a rare source of water and a new set of challenges. As we watch rivers and lakes re-emerge in the Sahara, a tantalizing question arises. Could the Sahara one day become green again? Some scientists believe it's possible. Climate patterns on Earth often follow cycles, and the Sahara has gone through many wet and dry phases over millions of years. If current conditions continue, we might be seeing the start of another cycle, one that could bring significant rainfall to the region over the next few centuries. Imagine what this would mean. A green Sahara could reshape Africa, potentially providing water and fertile land to millions of people. It might open new opportunities for agriculture, even offer refuge to wildlife, and help mitigate some of the pressures of desertification in the Sahel, the semi-arid region just south of the Sahara. But this future isn't guaranteed. The forces behind today's flooding are complex and may not be sustainable in the long term. The recent rainfall may be more of an anomaly, a temporary response to current climate pressures than the start of a permanent transformation. The Sahara's flooding isn't just a curiosity, it's a powerful reminder of our planet's interconnected climate systems. What happens in one region affects another. The sudden floods in the Sahara are prompting scientists to reevaluate their climate models forcing them to consider possibilities they may have once deemed unlikely. The Sahara's transformation may also have global repercussions. If desert greening were to continue, the increase in vegetation could play a role in carbon capture, potentially acting as a new natural sink for atmospheric carbon. This could have profound impacts on global warming, slowing it down, or even slightly reversing some of its effects. On the other hand, extreme weather in arid regions also serves as a warning. Flooding in deserts could become a new normal, not just in the Sahara but in other arid regions worldwide. This could mean challenges for desert communities everywhere, as infrastructure, agriculture, and daily life are disrupted by a climate that's increasingly unpredictable. The Sahara, an iconic desert that shaped human history and imagination for thousands of years, is changing before our eyes. Whether this is the start of a long-term transformation or a fleeting moment in time, one thing is clear, even the most barren places on earth aren't immune to the forces of nature. As we witness rivers and lakes form in places we thought were destined to remain dry forever, we're reminded of our planet's incredible resilience and capacity for change. But we're also reminded of the delicate balance of our climate system and the urgency of protecting it. The Sahara's floods are a glimpse into an uncertain future, a future that calls on us to understand, adapt, and respect the powerful forces shaping our world. Because in the end, the desert, like the rest of our planet, is alive, and it's changing in ways we're only beginning to understand.